All right, so what we wanted to do was provide a little bit of an update as the city uh, really dries out after a relatively unprecedented amount of rain last night in a short amount of time. And we also want to highlight, you know, there's lots of recovery, whether it's basic cleanups, whether it's different uh, impacts that occur with our transit system or other city um, services that we provide. Luckily for us, I will acknowledge it's a Sunday morning, which is really good because uh, if, if the situation would be a lot worse, actually, if it was during the week. So what I'm going to do is touch on in summary some of the things that we dealt with last night. And then we're just gonna hear a normal sort of roll call from our different departments. And that is typically sort of the same thing we would do in a snow day, things of this nature. So that's the format for today. Uh, I wanna begin, I guess, probably with this particular intersection right here. Behind us is the Arno pump station. This uh, literally we finished, I think about two years ago in cooperation with the water authority and the county and AMAFCA, that's our flood control authority. And we built this literally because I think it was about 25 years ago, this neighborhood was literally mostly underwater with what was a, at the time, 100 year flood. I will tell you last night, this neighborhood would have looked like that again, were it not for this station. We'll hear from the Water Authority a little bit. We did have some challenges though with it actually fully working. So this area did flood and you can see the water line up on those cinder block walls. We have some pictures that we'll share from last night. Fortunately, we believe, at least based on what, what these guys told me last night when I was here at two o'clock, they were like this far away from coming to their house, the water level. And, and so in many ways it was a miracle, but we also know this pond, it's hard to believe this entire pond was full and spilled out into the neighborhood. And had that pond not been there, you would, you would have what we had 25 years ago. Uh, but the water authority and got the pumps on at about, I'm gonna say about 1.30 and you can see today how effective it is uh, when they're actually on and so we're certainly glad we have this facility and and we'll work on making sure that it performs a little more on time next time so that was the situation down here roughly at broadway and lomas and we had a lot of water issues all throughout downtown that's sort of obvious given the valley that we're sort of in this is common but this reached extremes that we have not seen in a long time so central and the uh, over underpass under the freeway that had probably at least 20 feet of water it was completely impassable we did close that off as soon as we could this particular area apd closed it off you know roughly i'd say around 11:30, 30 uh, but it did take several hours to get the station back running we did have crews uh, from our fire department out here later as well as community safety was knocking on doors this morning to make sure people were okay this morning there were other areas around 8th in Central, around 8th and Marquez, that also had multiple cars that were stranded. That area naturally drained out by about 1 a.m. And uh, we also had flood damage in many city buildings. I'm not sure to the extent about private buildings, but we did have relatively minor damage uh, in the basement of City Hall and also the basement of, Albuquer of the Albuquerque Police Department and Plaza del Sol. Uh, to our knowledge, though, all our IT systems and emergency systems are all fine. So we think this is more just aesthetic damage. Our fire department will touch on all the things they were responding to, including um, trying to get some folks out of Arroyos. Also, they did a uh, interesting rescue at an American Legion post where people were sort of islanded and couldn't be get back to their cars. And then, of course, we had stranded vehicles all over the city. But by and large, you could tell by about 2 a.m., uh, things were starting to operate again and there was no at least danger for people in their houses that we were aware of at least at this point. And so uh, the city was able to recover within I think just a few hours, but it took us a while. Uh, last night was very, very extreme when it comes to weather and we're going to speak to that in just about a minute. Now, uh, the other thing that I do want to just touch on is that there are lots of street lights that are still out because of electricity issues and so forth. Uh, we're going to speak to those and work on those. Our transit system also is missing some buses. So we have three damaged buses from last night, including one art bus that uh, was really flooded out under MLK. Uh, but the individuals on that bus and the driver were able to get out okay. Uh, but that bus is, is in the repair barn and we'll see what can be done with it. So with that, let's hear from some of our experts who I know if it wasn't them, their departments were uh, really literally uh, out all night last night. And uh, let's start though with sort of the overall picture from our emergency management director, uh, Michael Riley. Hey, good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Riley. I'm the um, director of the Office of Emergency Management. 
Uh, what the city experienced last night was a rather unusual and dramatic uh, climactic event. We, um, the Albuquerque Metroplex uh, area, um, absorbed over an inch and a half of water um, in less than 90 minutes. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, excuse me, an inch and a half of rainfall, but it's the rate that matters. And it is highly unusual uh, for the city uh, this time of year. Historically, we experienced less than 0 0.3 inches of rainfall on this date and during this time of year. And that led to the uh, initiation of the coordinated response among all of the partners and directors uh, that you see here. But that's what uh, tipped everything off and got us into action. We also, uh, I think next we'll go to our uh, municipal works department. I want to mention too, the convention center was uh, about six inches away from uh, major, extremely expensive flood damage. Luckily, again, it did not get any higher. That is still being pumped out. And so this is the basement of the convention center in the loading dock. And so we're gonna be working on that all day to probably get that cleared out. So with more on what's happening with streets and lights and other uh, areas, Jennifer Morrow from Municipal Development. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Morrow. I'm the Deputy Director for Municipal Development. And uh, I want to let you know our crews were out working very hard last night. As you may have noticed, there were multiple uh, traffic signal outages at this time. Our crews have gotten all of the traffic signals back in operational mode other than just a handful. Those handful are still in red flashing. We do not have any actual outages. It's either a handful of red flashing or we're back to normal operating mode. Um, our street sweepers, we are going to have them come downtown and have them clean up, prioritize the downtown area. And then we'll start doing the surrounding areas because we know that there are many important places that we need to get our crews to. We ask that you be patient and we will get there. We, but we are having our crews work overtime and diligently to get this done. And then also with street lights, um, we have our contractor, Dalkia, who is working on the street lights and we are trying to get all of those operational as quickly as we can. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Um, now I uh, want to move over to our uh, unhoused population and some ser critical services we provide for folks in general on average in one form or another. We take care of about a thousand people a night at multiple facilities, some that we own, some that we don't, others that we run but we don't own. Uh, we were able to make sure that everyone was able to stay in their shelter out at the gateway. Uh, but we did have some uh, roof challenges and, and so forth out there, as well as some of our hotels that we have uh, unhoused families in. But uh, crews, actually, that was one of our first priorities, and we were able to make sure that everyone is fine in there. They didn't have to leave or anything like that. So very minor issues there, but that was initially one of our top concerns. So with more on this, our uh, new director of community safety, Jody Esquivel. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jody Esquivel, the director of Albuquerque Community Safety. And um, I just want to applaud the city for coming together with fire, APD, and the emergency um, operations is, is we really came together last night. And like the mayor said, we were making sure that everybody had a place to go. And this morning we came out this to in the area that we knew that was affected heavily to make sure that everybody was had resources, had food, had the ability to leave their house if they needed to, anything that we needed to help them with that we could help them with, as well as making sure that we checked in with all of our shelters. We're gonna continue to do that. I know that we're expecting just a little bit more um, rainfall, but we're just gonna keep having crews in the area proactively throughout this process to make sure that everybody has the resources that they need. And so we'll continue to support the community as much as we can in whatever instance that we can. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, uh, extremely busy night for our fire rescue team. And uh, let's bring up our chief of fire. Hi everyone, good morning. Uh, hopefully everybody woke up safe and with minimal property damage this morning. Uh, obviously it was a really busy night for public safety. Uh, AFR responded to 142 calls between 8 p.m. and midnight, which is unusual for us. We usually run about roughly 260 calls in a 24-hour period, so we are incredibly busy during that period of time. Um, some of the highlighted events, like Mayor said, uh, we did have one Swiftwater rescue. We had a report of two individuals that went into the Arroyo 
um, and we staged along the way along the diversion channel. Our crews never spotted anyone in the Arroyo uh, during that event and we did send our PIO went out this morning to where the diversion channel ends at Roy Road and uh, we have not found anyone um, in, the, uh, in, in that area. Uh, BCFR is right now uh, putting up a drone to see if there's any um, need for body recovery. But as of right now, we just have that one report that there was two people that went in, uh, but we have not spotted uh, those individuals. Um, some other highlights from last night, we did have two structure fires. One turned into an actual structure fire during the, during the height of the rainstorm. Um, and so we had to uh, manage that one on top of, we had 10 water rescues, which was uh, people stranded in their vehicles, including our water rescue at the American Legion, like Mayor mentioned. Um, and so that was just a highlight of some of the calls that we had. We had a lot of citizen assists, so people that were just in need of assistance that we were able to get out and respond to. So our crews were very busy during that period of time. Uh, we actually had two of our fire engines that uh, did suffer flood damage and had to go out of service. And so I want to thank our mechanics for very quickly getting our crews into spare apparatus, spare engines that we have, so we could take those two out of service that suffered flood damage and continue to provide those services in those districts where we had the, the uh, flooded engines. Uh, our dispatchers, we have six dispatchers at AFR, so they were processing a lot of calls in a short period of time, and they did a really good job, so I wanna thank our dispatchers for doing that. Uh, we were not, uh, we were able to respond to all of those calls for service. We didn't have anything stuck in pending or anything that didn't get responded to that came through 911, and that's a tribute to the work of our dispatchers and our personnel. So we wanna thank all of our personnel that really stepped up to provide that service to the community. And also, uh, we had a lot of assistance from Bernalillo County Fire and Albuquerque Ambulance to respond to the demand that we were seeing in the city. So we wanna make sure we thank them. Um, and then lastly, just important, when we have these emergency warnings that go out, it's really important to heed those warnings. So I know it rained pretty heavy and then it stopped and a lot of people went out and then it started raining again. So when you hear that, when you get those alerts, it's really important um, for the public to know like shelter in place, whether that means stay in your vehicle, don't try to drive. Uh, we had a lot of people that uh, just saw the rain coming down and uh, like Director Riley said, uh, it would just very quickly turned into flooding all over the city and that's where a lot of these rescues came from. So heed those warnings, shelter in place, and once that rain subsides, it's, it's safe to get out. So we just wanna remind everyone to follow those warnings. So um, thank you very much. And again, just wanna thank all of our personnel and uh, for taking, uh, stepping up last night. Thanks, Chief. Okay, and uh, also a uh, busy night for a police department, of course. So uh, let's bring up Deputy Chief Barker. Good morning, everybody. My name is Cecily Barker. I'm the Deputy Chief of the Field Services Bureau. And again, I just wanted to thank all of our um, city uh, departments who helped us last night. It was definitely a one Albuquerque effort to make sure that the community was safe. That was our number one priority. Um, the biggest issues that we had to deal with was assisting in closing uh, streets, making sure that individuals were safe. Um, like the mayor stated, um, MLK uh, saw flooding and we had officers assisting with that bus rescue. We really appreciate AFR um, because I have to say that we were really assisting AFR. They're, they're our true heroes. Um, as far as road closures, they started as early as 7.30 p.m. last night. That would have been at Corson Paseo in the northwest and then uh, Montano and Winter Haven, Comanche and Carlisle. And then as far as downtown, as early as 8.30 last night, we saw road closures. So in addition to making sure that the roads were closed so that we didn't have individuals um, get into uh, bad circumstances there, we were still responding to calls for service. I don't have the amount of calls for service that we have, but I do know that our comm center was extremely busy last night filtering those calls. Um, we did have flooding at the main police station, like the mayor said, as well as different uh, buildings throughout the city, including our communications center. It was a minor leak, but we really needed to make sure that our computers and phones stayed up. Uh, so those were our priorities. And again, just want to thank the community and our number one priority was your safety. So thank you. Thanks so much, Chief. And uh, let's see, with some more on some of the different uh, key city infrastructure, uh, do you want to give an update, Nathan? Sure. Good, all right. Yeah. Director of General Services. Good morning, everyone. Uh, last night, we received calls about uh, several city facilities that were experiencing um, water intruding into the facility, and we acted quickly. It was definitely uh, community service in action. 
Uh, we made decisions to share those limited resources throughout the city. Specifically, our forward-facing and public serving facilities were addressed first, and subsequent to that, we addressed our uh, city properties to um, extract water in Plaza del Sol, which basements got flooded, City Hall, as Mayor mentioned earlier. And so we partnered with our contractors to get extractors, people on site, definitely something to be proud of because it was a multi-governmental and a multi-departmental uh, effort. So it was definitely something to be proud of. And uh, about 1.30, of the water started to subside on the streets. Comms were great. So uh, yeah, we're confident that we're gonna be able to provide services to the public in these facilities that got flooded. So uh, that's the extent of our report. Uh, so thank you. Thanks so much, Nathan. Okay, and also from, of course, our Albuquerque Water Authority, incredibly uh, busy last night for them, uh, Dave Morris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, my name is David Morris. I'm the Public Affairs Manager for the Water Authority. Just a brief summary of, of what happened here at this location. Uh, this is obviously flood control for this neighborhood and uh, it operates, I'm told, on uh, four pumps, two of which were temporarily knocked out due to power issues, either a power outage or a power surge associated with the storm. That obviously reduced the capacity of this uh, facility to do its job. Uh, but as soon as we were aware of the situation, crews were out uh, to restore the, uh, the uh, malfunctioning pumps. And I'm told once it did get working, it worked, it worked very well. So uh, we want to we thank our, uh, our colleagues at the, at the city uh, for uh, all their help in uh, getting this back online. Uh, we did have a number of other uh, pump stations around town associated with our sewer system that experienced uh, similar problems. So we were out, uh, we were out dealing with a lot of uh, a lot of emergencies last night. So thank you. Thanks. Okay, so uh, we're going to have you take questions, and so Ava can moderate that. We do have some images that we can share with you. So be in touch with the Ava about sort of before and after um, shots. Yeah, we can take Go some ahead, questions Ava. here, and then if anyone wants a pull aside, we can also do those so we can get some people out of the sun. But if you have any general questions, if you can start talking to each other. Good. Okay. Uh, Sorry, um, I didn't use the How much water does this, uh, does this facility hold on a given basis? How much water was in it last night? <laughs> <laughs> we can also follow up Unless if they, we need uh, to. <laughs> I apologize, but I do not know the capacity in gallons of, of this particular facility. We actually maintain and operate it on, on behalf of, of the city, but it is not a water authority owned uh, asset. I have one question. So, Ava, we'll, let's follow we up. We can and get check that. on that and get just more details. I, I do have information on the pumps, just not the storage. If you're interested in the pumps. Yeah. Sure. Hi, this is Jennifer Morrow again, Deputy Director of Municipal Development. There are four pumps at this station. Each one of the pumps uh, can uh, pump up to 800 CFS. And so if all four pumps are operational, we pump 3,200 CFS. Are there any other stations like this that are located in Albuquerque? And if so, how many? There are lots, right? Again. <laughs> All right. So let's do this. So Dan Mayfield is here. He's gonna he's gonna track all of your technical questions on like cubic feet and all that kind of stuff. But we have pump stations all over the city. This, to my knowledge, I think is the biggest one uh, by far. And again, we had just put this one in. But there's one under Central uh, and that underpass. That one cleared out. It might have taken about six hours, but again, it was functioning. Um, and so that's usually the other one people ask about. In here, 24 acre feet. Emphasis on the word acre. That's a lot. Yeah. Go ahead. If you can raw and they do look like. So like this farm. is like a like a I don't know once every so often event. Is there going to be any future plans that we're got from this like learning lessons that, that we can implement to make a better approach? Well, I think the the biggest thing is we need to test. The electrical system that supplies actually these pumps right so look i mean obviously that did not work the way it was supposed to but that is much easier to fix now that we have this facility so it's kind of one of those things where i think we were fortunate that this entire community didn't flood again and it's because at least this pond was here 
Uh, but obviously, next time around, we need all four pumps working all the time. Go ahead, Jim. So it's fair to say that these pumps, as soon as it starts to rain and it starts to flood, it's not like they're going to immediately start getting rid of water. It takes time for it to, to filter it out and get it out of the system and out of neighborhoods like we have here. That's certainly true all over the city, uh, including here. So it's, you know these things are not sort of automatic and instantaneous. So it does take some time for them to pump out. But uh, we do know that this facility is set up really for a 50 to 100 year flood. So this is why it's here. And you know it's basically 50% capacity. So, but we did get it on, I mean, to your point, it was about, I wanna say roughly four hours till from when it started raining to when we they fixed the two other pumps. And so uh, that cleared it out. I mean, you could literally see the water receding as you stood here. It was that powerful. Go ahead, Kim. And you said there was a lot of damage, of course, in the downtown area, but how more extensive is the damage outside of the downtown area? How many roads did you guys have to close off to, for, for people's safety? I think we're still in I can get you the exact number of the roads that were closed, but it did go citywide, like you said. Um, like I said earlier, around 8.30 at night, we closed roads at Coors and Paseo. Um, we closed roads all the way uh, down south, including at Gibson and 98th Street, we saw flooding. Um, again, that happened throughout the night and we responded as quickly as we could. And I can get you that exact number in the times that we closed them. Julian? Uh, in regards to, uh, you guys mentioned fixing the pumps. When did you guys happen to see the problems start to come up and how long did Well, we had neighbors uh, who were, were certainly calling in to whether it was 311, but it was a Saturday at midnight, so um, that I actually think 311 is closed. It's open almost all the time, but not Saturday at midnight. And we did have calls in. So the answer to your question is I at least found it at 11 o'clock. And so I knew that this pump station, I knew from having to build this and fund it and get it done that you know this was a high place risk to go. And so, uh, and then in conversations with the neighbors, they had probably been calling in for about an hour before that. And then it was, uh, I mean, it was up and uh, pumping out by about one o'clock. So that was the timing, the turnaround time. We had some, we had to get in the gates there. It took us a while to get in there. And then we had a really uh, excellent uh, gentleman from the water authority who was able, an electrician who was able to sort of figure it out. Got it. That, do you want to add anything to that? No, that or was it also happening at other locations across the city? So this community actually, because it has a pump station, we can do something about it right away, right? We can pump it out. Other areas were much more challenged. So certainly 8th and Marquez, which is in Barrelas, that took a long time to naturally drain out with our storm water. Uh, but we were sending different, uh, we have some DMD trucks, some municipal work trucks that actually pump water. So they were taking a look at that area. They were also here making sure that it didn't rise above uh, people's foundations. So that was sort of the first response was those trucks coming in. Sixth in the freeway was another area that was heavily flooded. We closed that right away. But there were very few residences. So that one we just let naturally drain. So it just depends on the site. When was the last time the city seen a rain like this? How concerned are you regarding the rest of my safety? It's a good question. I think in terms of history, Michael, you might want to, I think you forgot the second part of your stat, which is on average what we expect. Right. Um, again, on average, you know, what we would, what we would expect uh, this time of year or on this, or on this date is zero water, which is no water. Obviously things are changing. And so we're going to have to uh, uh, refocus and just expect these things to happen in the future, plan for it. Yeah. I know in 2014 we had some severe flooding in the downtown area, especially by like um, Central and that underpass there, as well as the flooding on Broadway. How does that water drain now? Does it go through this system here, or does it naturally find its way uh, through the system elsewhere in the downtown area? Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, basically, yes. So we were just talking. It was about it was 2014. Uh, that was the last major flood like this. The one that really flooded Martinez Town, I think, was 10 years before that. But if you kind of check your archives, uh, it was certainly like in the modern era. It was in the 90s or early 2000s. So, um, but downtown basically floods naturally through the storm drain system. And in general, it does work. But that particular central underpass, that has always been an issue, always. Even when there's light rain, that is the first place that usually we go to and close off, and then this is usually the second. So, but it has a automatic pump that turns on. 
and was actually functioning, which is why it's dry now. So we can also send some before and after pictures of that. So that's the only area uh, really downtown where that pump has to work. If that pump doesn't work, it would be a lake right now. Um, and the rest of downtown, you know how it is in New Mexico, like especially if it's daytime and the sun comes out, it's just like the snow, we're usually fine. But when it rains at late night, stuff lasts until the sun comes out in the morning and the drain system can clear out. We are uh, tracking that. We're uh, we're obviously not going to do the weatherman spiel in terms of you know I don't know how it, we're supposed to be not as bad. Let me just say that you never know in New Mexico. But here's what the good news is: this should be fully functioning. That is a huge difference. Uh, the other thing is our city buildings and others that were damaged. We'll probably use some sandbags if we need to, because that actually you know we were talking about a matter of inches with water level, and so actually a foot of sandbags is enough usually to get us through. And so uh, we're going to be ready with much more sandbag operations uh, tonight. Um, in terms of the question for AFR, uh, how long did it take for you to respond to all these different calls? That you mentioned the, uh, the American Legion's rescue. How long did that one take? I know there was also a sunken car rescue. Could you talk about that as well? So uh, we were we were pretty lucky that we were able to respond to almost all of our calls immediately. There was very few calls that were held in pending, and we cleared those out pretty quickly. So there wasn't a long wait for any of those responses. Um, the American Legion one came in initially. It sounded worse than it was, so we we cleared that one within um, less than an hour. Um, and the sunken cars were a lot of people that were uh, out and got stuck across the t across the city just what, as that water was rushing through streets and they kind of had nowhere to go. And so sunken car sounds like completely submerged, but a lot of it was just getting people out that were having trouble getting out of their vehicles. And we were able to get to those um, w within pretty relative normal response times. Um, so we just, our crews were basically going from call to call. And then that's where Bernalillo County Fire also assisted us because in areas where we were resource deprived, they were able to step in with our with our auto, automatic aid agreement and help us in those areas. In the future, like with this potential rain, I know you said the weatherman thing, but will there be fire and police on standby to come in just in case we're OT or to come in to, to help with the problem. And it seemed like yesterday there was a couple of Albuquerque fire ambulances that were blocking traffic until more resources got to block traffic. Um, at Albuquerque Fire, we do have a policy where we can recall personnel if we need to. We did not need to do that last night. Um, part of the problem for us is our people also have to have the equipment and the trucks to work in. So um, we were very lucky that we could kind of manage what we have um, last night. But we were definitely keeping an eye on it. We do have the ability if we need to recall people um, in on overtime, uh, we do have that ability. But we were very lucky last night that we were able to manage it with um, on-duty personnel. And we do work closely with APD on things like blocking streets as well. Sometimes we utilize our trucks just to block the scene for safety of the personnel and the citizens that we're rescuing. So uh, we work with them um, with our big trucks to do that. We'll send out a press release with details. Do you guys need anything in follow-up? Dan or I can get back to you. Mayor, do you have anything else just to close up? Or we uh, no, I just hope that, you know, we're obviously uh, hopeful that they're no one was lost, no life was lost yesterday in general, but also in the Arroyos. So we'll sort of see how that plays out, uh, whether or not that was a, a legitimate concern or not remains to be seen. So that's certainly uh, heavy on our minds today. And then in terms of preparing, you know, these, I mean, I wouldn't call this a monsoon. This was way more than a normal monsoons, right? So I think in many ways, this was uh, a, uh, a quick adjustment by the city to be ready for monsoons that are much, much bigger. So uh, we were able to adapt fast last night, but now uh, we sort of know what to expect and what can happen this early in the year. And so this sets us up actually to be, have a more, uh, I think even faster response in the future and have this working. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody.